Hey everyone, AmtrakGuy365 here, and today on this remade edition of Engines of Amtrak, I'll be rediscussing the General Electric E60. This is a remake of the original episode you can still watch as of the making of this one. In the eastern United States, the Northeast Corridor in the early 1970s was looking pretty dated, especially the trains themselves. Most mainline passenger service in the area was divided between the mechanically unreliable Bud Metroliner sets and the aging General Electric GG1s. The GG1s were nearing 40 years old by the 70s. That also meant Amtrak was to inherit a fleet of them. Knowing their age, the railroad could either rebuild them or find a new locomotive. Amtrak went with the latter option, but there was a catch. No locomotive builder in the US offered a passenger exclusive electric locomotive at the time in 1973. Meanwhile, in the western deserts of the US though, the brand new 78 mile Black Mesa and Lake Powell Railroad, or BM and LP for short, had just opened up for business. The railroad would haul heavy coal loads between Peabody Energy's Kayenta Mine near Kayenta, Arizona, to the Navajo Generating Station power plant at Page, Arizona. The line was completely isolated from the rest of the American Rail Network and used a new type of dual cab electric locomotive known as the E60C, built by General Electric. Prior to the BMNLP's E60s entering service though, GE had proposed a passenger variant of the engine. Amtrak during this time was short on options as the GG1 was old, importing a locomotive from Europe would take three years for production time, while GE promised a locomotive for Amtrak within a year. The railroad went with GE and decided to adapt the E60C for passenger service. Throughout 1973, Amtrak would order a total of 26 units at a cost of $18.4 million. Initially, 15 would come equipped with standard steam heating technology for Amtrak's older inherited coaches known as the E60CP, while 11 would come equipped with the newer head-end power electrical system known as the E60CH. However, 9 of the steam heated units were changed to HEP as Amtrak increased its order of new HEP equipped and fleet coaches. The idea was that the E60 paired with up to 18 coaches reaching speeds of 120 miles per hour could replace the GG1 in Metroliner sets. As for technical specifications, the E in E60 stood for electric, 60 for 6,000 horsepower, C for the C-C wheel arrangement, and P for being a passenger variant of the unit, or H for being equipped with head and power. They are rated for a top speed of 120 miles per hour and produce 6,000 horsepower. They weighed in at 387,000 pounds. They came in at a length of 71 feet 3 inches, a width of 10 feet 7 inches, and a height of 14 feet 7 inches. The locomotives came equipped with a Nathan P01235 air horn. Here's an example. Amtrak's E60 units were delivered starting in November 1974, being numbered 950 to 975, and were the first locomotives to feature the railroad's new Phase 2 paint scheme. But as was common with early new Amtrak equipment, the E60 ran into some troubles. During the last test run on February 24, 1975, the locomotive derailed at 100 miles per hour on the Northeast Corridor, but remained upright. Similar to the problematic EMD SDP-40F diesel, the E60s were rather heavy. Their 387,000 pound weight compared to the 40F's 396,000 pounds was even less optimal for the E60's regularly fast trains. Also similar was the E60's being more suited for freight than passenger trains. The E60's tended to sway side to side while accelerating and at speeds over 100 miles per hour, which put stress on the rails. The Federal Railroad Administration investigated the test run derailment and revealed the root of the issue was the locomotive truck design. After this, the FRA placed an 80 mile per hour restriction on the E60. Amtrak found this unacceptable and sought to fix the truck problem prior to entering revenue service. By November 1975, the FRA was satisfied with the truck design changes and raised the restriction to 85 miles per hour. With that, Amtrak placed their new units into revenue service pulling both steam heated and Amfleet trains. Amtrak wanted to clear the locomotives for 110 mile per hour operation, but truly was never confident in their performance. Swaying was still a bit of an issue and the units sometimes rode roughly. So Amtrak turned to Europe for an answer to their electric locomotive woes. Between 1976 and 77, the Swedish RC4 and French CC21000 were trialed on the NEC to find a more permanent electric unit solution. This would lead to the development of the much more successful EMD AEM7 entering service in 1980. However, even with the AEM7's introduction, the E60 still had plenty of power left in them. In 1982, 
Two of Amtrak's units went to the Navajo Mining Railroad, and 10 went to New Jersey Transit in 1984 for use on the North Jersey coastline. Amtrak's remaining 13 units went in for a bit of an overhaul between 1986 and 88. They were given head-end power, re-geared for 90 miles per hour, renumbered 600 to 610 and 620 to 621, painted into Phase 3, and were now designated E60MA, MA standing for Motor Alternating. 600 to 610 had their weight reduced to 366,000 pounds, while 620 and 621 retained their 387,000 pound weight for primary use on work trains. With all of this said, their performance improved a bit. They also sometimes would be seen in push-pull operation on the Keystone service and powering rush hour clocker trains. They would soldier around throughout the 1990s and early 2000s alongside the AEM-7, HHP-8, and even the Acela Express. But by 2003, the big electric bricks were aged and it was time for them to be retired. After a 28-year career in 2003, all of Amtrak's E60s would be retired. All but one would be scrapped throughout 2004. In April 2004, the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania acquired number 603 and placed it on static display. Meanwhile, the Navajo Mining Railroad's Amtrak's units were scrapped in 2003, and New Jersey Transit had retired their units by 1998. NJT number 958 was preserved by the United Railroad Historical Society of New Jersey. The Black Mesa and Lake Powell Railroad's closure in 2019 meant the end of operating the E60s that started it all. Fortunately, though, number 6001 has found a new static display home at the developing Arizona State Railroad Museum. Finally, as of the making of this video, the 33-mile Deseret Power Railroad, also isolated from the American Rail Network, continues to use a fleet of E60 locomotives. In the end, Amtrak's E60s were unfortunately just a bit too rough riding, too heavy, and freight-oriented for use as a truly reliable high-speed passenger locomotive, with the AEM-7 winning out in the end. While the units found life elsewhere for a time, at the very least, one of Amtrak's is still preserved for all to see how the E60 left its mark on the history book of Amtrak, the National Railroad Passenger Corporation. Thanks for watching this remade episode of Engines of Amtrak. As I said at the beginning, the original episode from 2017 is still currently available for viewing as of the making of this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and stay tuned for next time when I rediscuss the <laughs> When I discuss the New York Central Hudson. Okay, so basically to explain what just happened there, I'm gonna try making an episode of Engines of New York Central to see how you all like it, considering I said I would make it back in 2018, and I think it's about time that it finally gets made. But after that episode, I'll go back to Engines of Amtrak and do the Metroliner. Thank you again for watching.